development. The Blender Foundation can support it because of the profits they made with the previous project. And we have a, a support of a great uh, German composer, uh, his company is WaveMates. But the targets are simple. We want to have hair and fur editing. I mean, everybody has seen all the Hollywood movies with the furry animals doing all kinds of crazy things. I mean, maybe you don't want to see those movies anymore, but for animators, it is cool to make it. It is really fun to have funny, cartoonish, uh, furry animals, comb them, make them looking really good, um, and make movies with them. We need that technology in open source. Other things is, for example, complexity with grass, leaves, and forests. This is for a 3D developer an inc incredible complicated task to edit it and to control it. And lastly, of course, you need character animation to be able to have a convincing cartoon animation. The other project is the Apricot Open Game project. That started just last week, a previous week. Uh, also six people, six months. It is supported by a couple of uh, Dutch organizations and by a French consortium of companies. And this time we are going to make a game. The target is again proof that you can use the open source software in the pipeline, in the studio, to have a really good looking, professional, high quality game. The use, of course, is uh, much wider. It's not only the fact that we deliver a game, it is again open content, so it delivers lots of opportunities for people to write books about, to base training on it and uh, education. There are more projects scheduled. At the moment, I'm working on Durian, which is going to be supported by a 4K cinema technology consortium. They need 4K cinema technology, but they also need freely licensed content for them to show. So we can make a movie which is totally ridiculously adolescent with monsters, battles, explosions, whatever you can uh, think of, which is fun, no story, uh, make it, it is financed, and release it for free. Of the last project, the fruit has to be picked. Uh, we, I want to do a film visual effect project too. It's important for Blender users that we have a good pipeline working for traditional filmmaking, like motion tracking, but also compositing and color grading. Okay, so where is the money, as people said before? So what is our open content business model? It is actually uh, based on, on four income sources in the Institute. This is the, the key one, which is what we could base our business on, which is the Blender community. The community is interested in having uh, fun, of course, have open source software development going on, because it's important for them that the software works and is being tested in a way that they can control. And by purchasing DVDs in advance, they can uh, actually make a real vote for something to happen with Blender. Subsidy and funds. In the Netherlands and Europe, it's very common that uh, culture and technology is being supported by governments. By having open projects and open content, you by definition are public benefit. So it's important for, the government thinks it's important to support you. If you are a little bit smart, you can apply for subsidies and have like 30 to 50% of your work uh, publicly financed that way. The other aspect is training, seminars, and documentation. So within the Blender Institute, we have a training room, and the artists who come over to work on a film will also give training to people. The training, they, they uh, get paid for, and we get paid for it. Uh, they are now going to make training DVDs, which we can sell online, and probably they are going to do some seminars on uh, uh, conferences, for example. The last thing, the most interesting thing that is being developed now is commercial sponsoring. Elephant's Dream, for example, was a big success in the high-definition TV industry. We didn't even expect it, but suddenly on trade shows you could see all these companies showing uh, Elephant's Dream because they could get the original files from what is directly coming from the render farm in the highest quality and do codec testing and do whatever they need for their technology offering, and they could publish about it, make uh, trade shows about it, and they had no issue whatsoever with licensing. There's a lot of business going on in this area, because, and that's for my last slide, so why would open projects and open content work for you? That is the whole licensing business 
versus sharing business. And the licensing business, I don't know if people here have commissioned like a movie or a commercial, but in my background I've done a lot of that kind of work. And then you get a very weird situation that you pay actually for making a commercial or a movie, and you are not even allowed to freely distribute it because it is entangled in a very complicated web of licenses. Because the composer and the actors and the writers and everybody involved try to secure their licensing rights, which makes it almost impossible for you to do anything with it. So if you start working on uh, the condition, no, we're going to be open content, open source, then you have to make sure, that, of course, you get paid in advance, Everybody should be well paid, but in the end, you have a product you can use yourself much better. Other aspects is, of course, education. One of the large funds in America who supports training and education, book writing for schools, now demanded that you have to publish things in open content. Because why would they pay for developing a math course for kids and then have a publisher making lots of profits with it and, and encapsulating it with licenses? So one math course can easily be copied to Dutch language and to other uh, countries in Europe. That, with open content, you can easily uh, achieve that. Development models for open technology. This is what the Blender Foundation does, but also movie studios and other organizations who support our projects, they would like some technology tested, and they don't care about what kind of movies are being made. Community involvement is important. Lots of communities are there online, and people really like to contribute. And of course, the last thing, not to forget, artistic freedom. With all these aspects, it is all people who have a, an interest in the movie but not in the content. So an artist is really free to make what he thinks, what he wants to make, and how he would like to make it. Okay, and I go... Ah, the last slide was... I'm going to show you a short trailer. This is not the official editor trailer, this is straight from the studio, but it is the first time we show anything of this project outside of the studio. The movie is about a big bunny, and in the two minutes before the clip you're going to see, you see the bunny waking up, it's a beautiful day, he walks around a little bit, he smells flowers, he sees butterflies, and he thinks this is going to be a great day. But then suddenly, a couple of little rodents come by and they decide to make his day a misery. And the introduction to that you are going to see. <coughs> I'm sorry? Uh, you can uh, make pictures and broadcast it, but you're not going to get the digital files. We want to have our own premiere in, uh, in six weeks. Thank <laughs> you. 